on the menu today. I really love you. Men are all alike. <laughs> Welcome. Don't worry, they're not as intelligent as you. Oh, hello chip dippers. Welcome to another Quick Bites, a retro recipe without the bells and whistles. Thank you. Now today we're going to be talking about the incredible context-aware artificial intelligence of David Crane's little computer dogs at uh, people. Sorry. Now I did do an episode recently about Little Computer People and about how it was able to make every copy of the disc for the Commodore 64 unique. Quite a feat by Activision. Uh, I said feat, not pause. But just to set the scene, here's a little reminder of what Little Computer People, LCP, was all about. Your little computer person would be completely unique in looks, character, personality, and name. But yes, that really was how LCP was marketed, as a house on a disc. And it was really only up to us to offer food, water, and mood boosters. But since I made that last video, Ulrich Hansen created this incredible Lego version of the little computer person house. So you can actually reach in with your own paws and touch him for yourself. You know what I mean? You know, I never had a doll's house as a kid, but I uh, can definitely see the appeal. But I do wonder if that little computer person knew that he was living in a simulation. Do you know something we don't? But there was an even more incredible feature of LCP. It had the ability, depending on his mood, his health at the time, and his personality type, to write you on his little typewriter, context aware and really natural seeming letters. And recently David Crane revealed the secrets to me of exactly how that AI worked. Now, just before we touch upon that, as she touches upon my arm once more, uh, I should mention that PCBY are absolutely terrible at context-aware artificial intelligence. However, if you want some great quality PCBs starting at just five bucks, we recommend PCBWay, excuse me, WAY! Because as we all know, PCB stands for Pixelated Computer Boys, doesn't it? Here's what David told me about how the AI works. While simulating your LCP, the program maintains internal parameters for your LCP's hunger, thirst, health, happiness, etc. When he sits down to type a letter, these parameters are analyzed. A letter from your LCP is broken down into a series of sentences conveying his thoughts. I recall conveying needs followed by desires, followed by stream of consciousness blather. Each sentence is divided into three phrases, a lead-in followed by a thought broken into two parts. After I created this structure, two writers at Activision created a table of sentence fragments. Now those writers, by the way, included Sam Nelson, who was the producer on the game. He went on to become the senior VP of product at Electronic Arts, no less. And the other writer was his wife, Paula Polly, who also wrote the book that came with the game, The Little Computer People, and explained how they were discovered living inside your computer. Ooh. So it really was a forerunner to assistants like Siri. You know, Siri, you can ask it a question or something fun like, uh, what's your favorite color? Or, you know, how are you today? It will answer in different ways, but only in so many different types of way uh, before it loops back around to one of the original answers it gave you. And it's just the same way that LCP worked. How are you? I'm happy to be here. How are you? Not too shabby. Thanks for asking. How are you? I feel good. Thanks for asking. How are you? I'm happy to be here. Aha! <laughs> Here's a little illustration of some of those phrases that David extracted from the original code to show us today. So let's say our guy's really happy. He's got a full belly and full panties. Sorry, a full pantry. <laughs> The code will randomly choose from these options and start to piece together a sentence. And that sentence in this case reads, I'm always thankful to live here. My belly is full and I don't have to worry about where my next meal is coming from. Ah, oh. now what if the food stores are getting slightly depleted? Well, then it becomes something random like, 
my pantry may not be full, but I don't have to worry about food, so pardon me while I just keep an eye on the dog. Puppy Frag Dick approves. Well, things are getting a little more perilous now. The food stores are getting lower. I'll leave it up to you to keep an eye on the pantry so that I can have a good meal whenever I want one. I think he's trying to tell us something. What if we still didn't deliver any food? The food stores are lower still. Remember that I'm counting on you to get me some groceries so that I know I won't go hungry. Please, sir, can I have some more? Basically what he's saying. Well, now you've left the computer for way too long and it says that the food stores are empty, or nearly so. I hope you're as concerned as I am because I haven't eaten in quite a while and the cupboard is almost bare. Oh, I can't bear this. Now there's no food at all and he's getting sick. I guess I feel so sick. I'm turning green because I'm so hungry and I'm really scared because I'll run out of food. Oh, what have we done to the poor little guy? Well, I won't put us through any more emotional torture. You get the idea with that. I should just mention though that although there are rumours of the little computer person dying, I can't find any evidence of this. It seems that he would just go to bed and never get up. Wait. Oh. Well, either way, because there were thousands of possible combinations, like the ones we just saw, with added stream of consciousness bladder and those other phrases to the end of it, it's likely your LCP would never type the same letter twice, making him seem truly human. Pretty impressive for 1985. Well, and as our little guy is sitting at a typewriter, David even had some fun coding in some intentional errors, followed by some backspacing on the typewriter. So was LCP the first AI? Well, kind of, is the answer. Uh, back in 1964, ELISA was created by MIT to demonstrate the superficiality of communication between humans and machines. We've added human speech to make the conversation more clear. Men are all alike. In what way? They're always bugging us about something or other. Can you think of a specific example? Well, my boyfriend made me come here. Your boyfriend made you come here? He says um, I'm depressed much of the time. I'm sorry to hear that you're depressed. It's true. I am unhappy. <coughs> Eliza simulated conversation by using a pattern matching and substitution methodology that gave users an illusion of understanding on the part of the program, but had no real built-in framework for contextualizing events. And that's the key way that LCP was different and an advancement in my opinion. It did contextualize the environment and what was going on for that little guy at the time. Now MIT followed up four years later with something called Shrudlu, Shrud, S-H-R-D-L-U. Uh, this was named after the arrangement of the letter keys on the linotype machine. And Shrud, Shrudlu, and Shrudlu, and that program was kind of fascinating in that it created a simple world that the program could explain to the user in natural language. And a final fun one was Nile, the non-intelligent acquired language learner. I think you're even more intelligent than he was. Uh, this was more of a chatterbot and it would essentially take what you said to it and then start to string them together into things that sounded kind of like what you were talking about, but it was more really just a bit of fun. I certainly had a lot of fun playing with it on my Amiga 500 as a teenager. Men are all alike. Harry Fractic made me come here. They're always bugging me about something or other. He says the Amiga will cheer me up. They're always bugging me, come here. No, you come here. No, you come here. No, you. They're always bugging me about something or other. What are they bugging you about? Yes, they bugging you about something or other. That's what she said. Perifractic made me up. <laughs> but none of that really compares to LCP in my mind. Uh, as people are starting to realize today when they're creating AI, what's more important is the face to match the personality. I really love you because you is my creator. And nearly 40 years ago, LCP already had that. We had not just a little guy showing some context-aware intelligence, but 
well, he had his own personality, his own body, and his own house. Well, that was if you didn't accidentally kill him first. Either way, it was quite a feat, and I just want to thank David for creating something that gave me and Puppy Fractic so many weeks of enjoyment in our own individual teenage years. And if after watching all this, you're excited about maybe becoming the next David Crane and programming some AI or some machine learning, then I must recommend our sponsor, Datacamp. Excuse me. Datacamp is an online learning platform that makes it easy to build data analytical skills at your own pace with its interactive courses. No previous data skills are needed to get started because it offers courses at all skill levels. And better still, you can learn directly from your web browser. So invest in yourself today. Check out my link in the description and you'll get your first month's course completely free. Speaking of free, well, I guess you're now free to go. I just want to thank you for watching this recipe. Until next time, subscribe and support below. And cheerio. Say cheerio. Nearly. He had this ability to write really natural, natural language, real vocal. <laughs> and that's our little guy sitting in a typewriter. David even had some fun. Fun. And shrill. Shrill.